All right, everybody, hail and welcome back to another episode of Midgard Musings. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jesse, and I am the host here on this channel. If you like Lord Norse heathenry, things pertaining to Germanic heathenry, Germanic paganism, what some folks will call also true, uh, thank you for watching today, and please be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications so that way you don't miss any new content that I upload here in regards to those subjects. Uh, today's video is going to be on the subject of dealing with betrayal and repairing the damages that have been made to what I would refer to as the Frith Web. Okay, and this subject uh, kind of came to me as, as a topic to talk about um, kind of on the coattails or writing off the coattails of one of my last videos about forgiveness uh, from a heathen context. I will link the video up here in an annotated card for you to check out and it will also appear at the end screen of this video. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump right into this. Before I go much further, if you haven't yet, please check the description area of this video uh, for the Linktree link that gets you to a bunch of different uh, sites that you can check out that support Midgard Musings. There's Patreon, uh, some merchandise through Teespring and Redbubble. I also do room sets, uh, donations for PayPal, buy me a coffee. All that type of stuff is in the Linktree link down in the description, so be sure to check that out while you're here as well. Alright, so the, uh, the topic that I wanted to talk about today, as I said, was that of betrayal. Um, I think everybody here has felt betrayed to some degree from somebody or some buddies at one point in their life. Um, this isn't an inherently heathen thing, um, but we definitely, um, depending on the, the circles that you get into um, and the types of heathens who you speak to, um, there's definitely a uh, worldview approach to how we deal with betrayal um, as, as heathens go. Um, and one thing, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the, the damages that, that come to the frith web, what's called the frith web, um, you may hear that term frith get uh, used very frequently in heathen circles, on heathen pages, heathen videos, you may hear that term get used. And if you're new to heathenry or um, you may not know, even if you're not a heathen, you may not know what is he talking about when it comes to frith. Um, I'm also going to have a video linked up here to a very uh, informative video uh, that, is, uh, that, was, that was made by uh, Eric Shervin over at the Ravens Call, and I definitely recommend that you check out his channel here on YouTube as well. Um, but he did a video um, kind of going over the meaning of frith and the differences between frith and grith, um, because the term frith kind of gets used, especially in uh, online platforms, as a as a description of things that exist or something that exists online and it just simply it cannot be there there's no way to have frith or to build frith strictly from social media from a social media platform or from an online perspective so um, the idea of frith uh, is very closely tied to kinship I would just say that so much um, blood kinship in particular um, but also the kinship by marriage and adoption and fostering and, and that sort of thing. The, the words uh, frith and, and also you may hear the word sib, um, they're often used kind of interchangeably to describe the state of uh, being of people involved in a sort of kindred uh, relationship. Um, that term sib or that word sib, we can see um, the connection with that in our modern word sibling when you are referring to you know, your brother, sister, uh, respectively. So the term frith um, didn't did not merely indicate that there was a maternal or material uh, fact of blood relationships, okay? It rather describes the essence of the relationship itself. The joys, the ups, the downs, um, the responsibilities, um, the interdependencies, uh, burdens and benefits um, that Kind of characterize it. So it's not all peaches and cream, right? It's not all easy come, easy go when it comes to um, our relationships uh, with family. And the, the building of frith um, outside of that blood tie is definitely a work in progress. It's definitely something that has to have that interpersonal relationship face to face. You know, I'm here with you, you're here with me, we're here with each other. Um, and it, again, you can't experience that from just talking to somebody online and, and, and engaging in a conversation online. Uh, so the reason why I'm bringing up Frith specifically, and, and, and even though this video is about dealing with betrayal, is because 
it has to be understood. We have to understand this when we're talking about betrayal because when Frith is built and when Frith is established, um, those ties become very strong. Um, the obligations that are uh, associated with those that have been intertwined within that Frith web, those, those obligations, that, that sense of trust with one another, it's a very sacred thing and it's a very strong bond. bond. Um, when those bonds are broken, when the threads are severed, when the ties are severed, when things happen that damage the integrity of that frith web, we experience um, betrayal. The, the betrayal has happened. The betrayal to the trust of things. Um, and, it, and it goes, it, it, right, we, we see it hit in so many different ways, I think. We have betrayal of friends, betrayal of family, betrayal of in relationships, um, when, you know, perhaps a family member did something to betray the trust of another family member, um, when, when, when a friend uh, abandoned their friend of, long, of a long time um, and did things that just, you know, for all the years that we've known each other, for the length of time that we know each other, you, you did this one thing, you did something or some things that caused me to then rethink why I should trust you, why I should have this connection with you. And I think the biggest one that a lot of us have felt that bitter sting of betrayal from is in relationships, uh, romantic relationships. You know, there's um, things that one or the other has done that has caused a breach of trust. Uh, we've betrayed that person's trust. We've done something to cause that person to challenge the, uh, the integrity of that relationship. Um, so why I bring up Frith is because I think that Frith is being established, Frith is being woven, those, those threads are being woven in different ways with different people. Um, we, we see um, a, a relation or, or, or a similarity etymology in words that Frith is seen in. We see it in the word friend, we see it in the word free. Um, frith was something that kind of to our ancestors was a uh, the power that makes them friends uh, towards one another, the power that makes them feel what they feel with one another, that trust, that, that, you know, if anything were to happen, I knew that I could count on you, um, that sort of thing. Um, you know, so when it comes to the, that, that freeness, that freedom, um, you know, I don't think in their minds that the word freedom meant that it was a freedom of responsibility, that it was a freedom of, yeah, I don't have to help you, I actually, you know, it, 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 it meant that there was a uh, strong enough bond uh, to face the tough times, to face those things that would come and potentially destroy the integrity of the Frith Web, that would potentially come in and destroy that uh, connection, you know, um, whatever it could be, whatever the world would throw at them, the, the various evils, the various turmoils, the various uh, things that, that, like I said, that could just damage that connection, that, that bond. Um, those connections help the team, help help the, the collective overcome those differences, overcome those challenges, overcome those uh, obstacles and those hurdles. So when we are surrounded um, by people, when we have that frith established and built and, and we have those connections, we're better able to deal with the challenges. If we're just a lonely wretch out there by ourselves, um, kind of dealing with things, we're, we're much more susceptible to those attacks and much more easy, easily uh, overturned or overcome by the challenges rather than having that support from our community, from our tribe, from our kindred, whatever you want to call it, um, to, to deal with those threats. Um, I feel like, like the term Frith captures a huge proportion of everything good that could exist in life. It, it's how society uh, it's kind of at the root or at the, the backbone of how society thrives, right? Everybody has that sense of, of obligation to one another. Um, it doesn't even have to be spoken, it's just inherently known that when you are a part of this collective, when you are a part of this group, here is what is required of you, here is what, is, here is what you are obligated to do. Um, so again, now that we have like a basic good understanding of the Frith uh, thing, um, and again, I encourage you guys to check out the video that I linked up from Eric's channel uh, to listen a bit further on the meaning of Frith versus Griff. Um, but uh, when, when that is broken, when those, when those ties are damaged and when the web is damaged, what happens? What do we do to repair those damages if they can be done? 
And it goes back to some of what I talked about in my previous video about forgiveness. There has to be something, a payment, a ransom paid, a, a, what we call shield. Um, there has to be something that is required at the hand of the offender to repair and bring back that sense of wholeness, okay? To repair the damages that was done. So you have to come back and, and it's not just a matter of reconnecting. It's a matter of, of enforcing that connection, reinforcing, and, and spending time there on that, because that's a point of weakness now. It's a point of weakness. We've, we've experienced something that causes us to, you know, when we see certain things, when we see those red flags come up, we are challenged with, again, I can't trust you because of things that you've done in the past, or things that you've done to me uh, or to others that are going to now cause me to challenge your level of commitment, your level of trustworthiness. Um, so time and, and effort has to be spent there more so than others, uh, uh, or more so than other things, to rebuild the strength that was that was lost when those when those uh, when when that web was was damaged. Um, and that could be a various number of things, right? It could be um, having to give up and, and have compromises with the other person who you've offended or who you've betrayed or who felt betrayed by you. Uh, or by us, you know, however it goes, one way or the other, we may be have felt betrayed by somebody, and so we there require a higher standard. We, we set a shield that is very high for them to, rep to repair those damages. They may set a shield high for us if we were the ones who betrayed them. Um, so it ultimately comes back to the fact that trust was breached and, and frith was broken. And in order to repair that frith, time and effort uh, must be spent. Now, Many times, um, when betrayal is felt and, and when these sorts of things happen, um, the damages are so great and the, um, the frith web has become so greatly uh, compromised, the integrity has become so greatly compromised that there's no real way to repair that point. It's almost like you have to start over again. You have to just say, you know what, enough of this, we're, we're done with that part of things, we're moving on to something else. Um, and that can be very difficult. Um, it's always tough to build from the ground up. It's always tough to start over from scratch again, especially when you get into things that go into the realm of where you felt that betrayal. We're talking about relationships specifically uh, because that damage was done. You have that memory. You have that thing that happened and you don't want to revisit it. You don't want to relive those, those horrors, those, those, uh, breaches of trust ever again. So you become guarded, you become very uh, reclusive in a way. You don't want to have something a part of your life that is going to hurt you again. Um, so it, it definitely, I think, fits, you know, it's, it's not a one and done. It's not, it's not something that we can just say, oh, if you do this, it's going to fix it all the time, 100% of the time. It's very case by case sort of thing. Um, but coming from, you know, a heathen perspective, uh, you know, I see that the damages that are done to the Frith web uh, through betrayal, um, it's really up to the person who was betrayed. You know, do you want to seek that restitution? Do you want to have shield repaid? Or do you just say, no, you are cast out, you are now neathing, you are no, no longer part of my life and I don't want anything else to do with you. And you have that, you, should, you are certainly within your rights to do that. And in retrospect and vice versa, if somebody who uh, you betrayed does not want to take the chance and have you, you know, sort of pay that debt, um, they may declare you as needing, and you may be cast out of their circle and out of their lives. So it's definitely possible to happen. You know, the, the damages can be so great that there's no there's no benefit in repairing it. It's just wipe the slate clean, start from scratch, and move on. Um, so that is where I'm coming from from a, a, a heathen aspect. It's um, it's not something that we maybe see written about in our lore. It's not like something, well, what happens if this happens? You know, what do I do? This, that, or the other. But there's definitely things that it existed in Germanic society uh, when it came to the sense of obligation to your tribe, the sense of obligation to your community. When those things were damaged, when things were betrayed, when betrayal was um, uh, felt. Um, we see it sometime in the lore. I think of, you know, the, the sense of, uh, you know, Odin and Loki and you know, he, they are blood brothers in, in the lore, and in, throughout the lore we hear about things that happened that Loki did um, to cause disruption and to cause problems for the tribe of the Aesir. 
And I think because of their connection, because of their blood ties, um, there was shield paid, there was, there was restitution sought after, there was things done, Loki, you have to fix this. Um, until it came to a point where Loki did something that was just so uh, detrimental to the integrity of the tribe that he betrayed their trust so much that they said, no, you know what, you are now bound, you are now you know, uh, bound underneath uh, and, and you were going to have the, the poison drip on you and that sort of thing. And there was no further attempt to try and repair that damage to the Frith Web. The Frith Web had been burnt and, and destroyed so severely that there was no way to further uh, fix it. It just had to be something that was, you are now needing, you are outcast, you are outlawed, you're out of here. Um, so anyways, everybody, that's my take on dealing with betrayal. Um, I'm anxious to see what you guys think down in the comments section. Please leave your thoughts. Um, I'm sure everybody that watches these videos uh, is, intrigued, is as intrigued as I am. Uh, but speaking for myself, I'm just kind of anxious here. What do you think about the concept of betrayal? Should we seek restitution? Should we give people that second chance or third chance or fifth chance or whatever it is? Where do we kind of draw the line? Um, what are those offenses that we just should not have any sort of you know, attempts made at fixing the, the damages done to the Frith Web. Um, and let me know what you guys think down in the comments section. I'm definitely looking forward to, to hearing your thoughts. Um, everybody that's watching live on Facebook, stick around so that way I can read your thoughts and comments. And everybody up here watching on YouTube, thank you again so much for your constant support. Please don't forget to subscribe down below. And if you don't want to miss anything, click the bell for notifications. Hail and thank you all. And I will see you in next week's video.